end of another busy work week, it's Friday, November 15, and it's 40 days until Christmas. Residents engage ministers of government at community meetings, and senior citizens welcome $21 million modernized Suzdike Post Office. Welcome to InfoHub. Residents in Region 3, 4, and 5 on Thursday were able to engage ministers of government during meetings held in various communities. Here's a snippet of what took place at four of 20 meetings. Residents of Denamstel, a village on the west coast of Demerara, were given the assurance that salary increases are not one-off. Minister of Finance, the Honorable Winston Jordan, noted that the increases will become bigger and better as the years progress and the economy transforms. He said talks in the opposition quarters opposing the salary hike are nothing more than foolish and should be outrightly rejected. Let him know by tomorrow that the monies that have been allocated to our hard-working public servants, our hard-working members of the disciplined services, is given now and forevermore. Amen. It is a sustainable increase that you in January you'll see a pay packet, next year December you'll see a pay packet. The monumental increases will be given once Guyana starts producing oil. While noting that the benefits are guaranteed, Minister of Natural Resources, the Honorable Raphael Trotman, stressed that residents must continue to support the coalition government. He was at the time addressing residents of Buxton, a village on the east coast of Demerara. Over at Container City, residents pledged to join forces to undertake several small projects in their community. This includes the construction of several bridges, a walkway, and clearing of trenches. Minister of Public Infrastructure, the Honorable David Patterson, while engaging residents of the community, assured that the materials will be provided to undertake the projects. Meanwhile, Minister of Social Protection, the Honorable Amna Ali, told residents of Atlanticville that good governance must continue. The minister reminded that the people of Guyana suffered for too long under the previous administration, adding that the coalition government has a track record of transformational development. We must resolve that we want forward ever and backward never. We must not go back to those days. We must want development for ourselves, for our neighborhood, for our country. We must ha want a better life. The community meetings continue on Friday in Region 6. Shaquille Bourne, Foreign for Hub. Several ministers of government will be fanning out across the country over the weekend to meet with residents of Regions 5 and 6 to listen to their concerns and to craft solutions. The ministers will visit several communities. Among the areas to be visited are Cotton Tree, Manchester, Sheet Anchor and Sanvoot. Check our website dpi.gov.gy and Facebook and Instagram pages over the weekend for reports on the meetings. Senior citizens who receive services from the Suzdike Post Office are ecstatic with the facility's modernized upgrade. The $21 million post office was commissioned on Thursday. It was in a little bad state, but now it is better, looking better, look more comfortable and everything. More comfortable and everything, 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 more comfortable. That was 65-year-old Elaine Lawrence and 74-year-old Myrtlin Higgins who frequently visited the Suzdike Post Office to conduct business. The extensive upgrades which will allow the post office to serve its customers more efficiently commenced on June 4 and were completed on October 29th at a cost of $21 million. The single flat commercial structure has approximately 810 square feet of usable space and is equipped with the necessary amenities for a public building, including features that can accommodate access by persons with disabilities. At a small dedication ceremony on Thursday, Minister of Public Telecommunications, the Honorable Catherine Hughes, said space has been allocated for a new ICT hub and the Wi-Fi connections have been installed. She noted that residents, especially school children, can make use of the free service. Minister Hughes said her ministry is on a mission to refurbish each postal service outpost throughout Guyana. Among the post offices rehabilitated is Kitty, Georgetown, New Amsterdam, Burbies, Anna Regina on the Essequibo Coast, and Wismar in Linden. There's no question that we know where we started prior to 2015. And therefore, I feel I have every right 
to stand up and say, I am proud that we have started a process of fixing and restoring and building so that our citizens can benefit from these opportunities. The Pleasance Post Office is currently being constructed, while the one at Buxton is next on the list. For InfoHub, Ayanna George. Two months after initial deliberations and crafting of a work plan, consultations will soon begin on Guyana's national land policy. The Red Plus Investment Fund is making this possible with a contribution of $3.1 billion. The new national land policy will ensure a strategic framework to guide land development in Guyana. According to manager of the Ghana Lands and Survey Commission Secretariat, Derwin Humphrey, all stakeholders will have an opportunity to make recommendations at different stages of development in the next few months. Humphrey describes the step toward a national land policy as monumental. We envisage that through dialogue and proper facilitation of dialogue, um, their compromises and mutually beneficial positions that we can arrive at. And this is, this is why a land policy is important because it consolidates the agreements and the positions in relation to those issues that exist um, relating to the land and puts it into a document. The commission has given itself an 18 month time frame to complete the policy framework. Under the project and in partnership with the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, the Commission has recruited an international consultant as well as a national uh, counterpart consultant to lead in the development of this national land policy. The national land policy overarching policy document is being developed under the theme Mainstreaming Sustainable Land Development and Management. Felicia Valenzuela, InfoHub. When we return, Department of Culture promises Mashramani 2020 with a twist. Details after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Citizens are being encouraged to improve the manner in which they dispose of waste. This call is being made by the supervisor of the Hags Bosch Sanitary Landfill site, Lloyd Stanton. As the shift towards waste to energy intensifies, supervisor of the Higgs Bosch Sanitary Landfill site, Lloyd Stanton, said disposal practices must be improved. He was at the time addressing journalists moments before facilitating a media tour of the facility on Thursday. Under the Ministry of Communities, the Higgs Bosch Landfill site is the largest in the country. The site receives almost 450 tons of garbage daily from the capital city, the East Bank of Demerara, and the west coast and west bank of Demerara. We, we as, a, as a country need to change our disposal practices completely to even think about facilitating such plants. Reason being, if we buy a bottle of water and we drink and a little is left inside, we throw it in the bin. In developed countries, and I, I can speak for Japan, because this is where I did my training and studies, you throw the liquid out first and then you dispose of the bottle. Another practice is leaving garbage bins open even when it rains. This allows for accumulation of a very high moisture content, which makes it difficult for the complete disposal when it reaches the landfill site. Now if you're going to do incineration or, or, or any kind of thermal treatment, that is um, automatically going to send up the cost just to dry it, then to get it to burn. It's going to use a lot more fuel, a lot more energy to burn the waste because it's wet. Continuing on development, there is more frequent monitoring of sites and the introduction of groundwater testing and sampling. The site's roads have also been improved, providing easier access to the location. The leachate and the surface water are also monitored quarterly. Meantime, the ministry has partnered with the Environmental Protection Agency to ensure that the facility is being run in an environmentally friendly manner. Reporting for InfoHub, Alexis Rodney. In this final report, Neola Damon tells us it is going to be an epic moment come February 2020 when Guyana will be celebrating its 50th Republic anniversary and the Department of Culture is seeking to establish multilateral partnerships with various countries to ensure the event is one to be remembered for decades to come. What we're trying to do is to involve 
countries that has a very uh, historical relation with with Gaia, with the Guyanese society, countries like India, for instance, and already India has agreed to bring down a, a troupe um, that is a cultural troupe of dancers and so on, and they would also be introducing or making available uh, a symposium workshop uh, exhibition on information technology and that will run for some time. We hope that we can involve, through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, of course, um, China, who has got close relations. We want it to be spectacular and something that we can always remember. The Minister of Social Cohesion, who also has responsibility for culture, youth and sport, the Honorable Dr. George Norton, added that the department is looking to partner with Brazil and possibly the Embassy of Ghana. He stressed that the upcoming event will be one to remember as the Interim Planning Committee is also seeking involvement by the various government ministries. It will all contribute to us having that um, celebration that we aim to have. Minister Norton said the budget has been allocated for the remaining administrative regions to host their respective activities. Neola Damon, InfoHub. Remember to check our website dpi.gov.gy and Facebook and Instagram pages for a special report on recently hosted regional meetings. That's all for today. Connect with us on WhatsApp, Facebook and YouTube. Much more news is on our website dpi.gov.gy and pop over to Instagram for the latest photo updates at DPI Guyana. Your bridge and weather reports are up next. Have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Goodbye for now.